Hi everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. This is the tutorial for making the scarlet cropped sweater that is the second design in the Yarn Hook Needles fall line of 2018. So basically today what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to create this stitch pattern on the sweater and then we'll also talk about sizing and how to assemble and all of that. So for those of you that are looking for a full beginning to end tutorial, that's not necessarily what this is, but I assure you, I will give you all the tools um, necessary to be able to complete this. So as you can see, this is made in the shawl in a cake yarn. Um, it's kind of a re-release of an older yarn that they used to have. In fact, I'm using shawl in the ball, but now it's in a different form, and I believe the yardage is a bit more. Um, I really, really love it. This kind of lacing detail, as you can see, really shows off the flex of the you know, glitter, and it's perfect for holiday parties and um, Christmas and anything like that coming up. So one of the things that I wanna mention is I created the sleeves a little bit longer, and I have a few reasons why. I know that kind of the oversized look is what a lot of people like these days but the pattern is simple enough that you can shorten the length of the sleeve if that's not really your style. Um, another reason why I did that is because I like the idea of being able to kind of do it like this. And if you notice in my photos, I styled this over in Oxford with some black slacks. So it'd be perfect for like the office or something like that. And to have that cuff of the white Oxford shirt kind of going over that. Another thing too I wanna mention, and I'm gonna draw it out just like I always do is this sweater is made with what is called a dropped sleeve style. And basically what that means is you kind of have the body of the sweater, but then your sleeves drop down. So normally a person's shoulder, you know, is going to go here, but these sleeves kind of hang down over. So instead of fitting you like a t-shirt would, more hugged, which I believe is a sleeve style more like this, for anybody that is a bit familiar with sewing. This is more of a shape of a sleeve that's gonna hug you a little bit more. This style is great for people who are looking for quick garment makes or not a lot of math involved or sizing, things like that. People who are timid or really new or maybe have never done a garment before, the drop sleeve style is really, really easy because basically all you're doing is you're basically gonna make a front panel, a back panel, that for this design, they're identical, and then you're going to make sleeve panels. And then all that's gonna happen in the assembly process is you're gonna assemble like so, leaving enough room for a head hole. And another great thing about this pattern is you can make your head hole as large or as small as you want. I created my head hole so that it could be styled over a bodysuit or a bralette or something like that and have a little bit of a drape off of one shoulder. Um, but again, you can make that head hole as large or as small as you want. And then because it's the drop sleeve, like I said, you're gonna attach your sleeves with this part centered and you kind of fold it over to where everything matches up. And you know, once your garment is like this, okay, because you've got your you know, things sewn on right there, I like to start um, here and go down. So you'd start at the cuff and you work your way down and you seam it up and then flip it right side out and it's really easy. Um, so please don't be afraid to try a garment. Um, dive in, I will do my best to respond here on YouTube or on my blog or you can message me on social media or even through email at yarnhookneedles, I'm sorry, yarnhookneedles at gmail.com and I will do my absolute best and if I can't get to you, my assistant Julie, uh, will help answer and field any questions or comments or anything that you might have. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So what we're gonna do today is, this is a swatch of the stitch pattern. I'm gonna explain a little bit of how you go from making the ribbing to transitioning into the actual uh, body and sleeve of the design. This is worked from bottom to top, and that's both for the sleeves and the front and back panels. I will also link to the written pattern and Etsy and Ravelry where you can get printable PDFs um, down below in the description bar. But for today, please just know this is showing you how to create this swatch right here um, along with the ribbing. So first what we're gonna do is, like I said, 
we're going to start by creating the ribbing and this design is made for sizes extra small to extra large but again I can help you if you are beyond that or if you want to make it for a child or something like that so what we're going to start off by doing is chaining 11 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and then in the second chain from the hook we're just going to do single crochets across in the written pattern for free on the blog I will give you the exact number of everything for the sizes again this is just a tutorial I, I don't want to I keep emphasizing that because I don't want people to get upset but um, it makes it a lot easier to load videos and get tutorials up faster for you guys if I just give you the nitty-gritty details of how to do these designs and then help any who might need help along the way um, so just I just want you to know that all of the specifics for making the exact pattern will be in those links below when you get to the end you're gonna chain one and turn and uh, you know me I love me a good ribbing and so I like to utilize those front and back loops and if you aren't sure what the front and back loop is if you look at the top of your work you can see a V so the V that's facing you would be considered the front loop the V facing away would be considered the back loop so for making the ribbing what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet into the back loop only straight across back loop only and that's going to give us that nice knit rib looking texture. I really really love utilizing this stitch for whenever I'm adding ribbon uh, ribbon <laughs> ribbing to my crochet garments. It's just one of my favorites. There's another way that you can do this that involves front and back post stitches but for this design I did it this way. Um, you chain one and you turn. Now a little hint for those of you that might say my row counts are getting off or my design is going crooked or it's growing or something like that. A little trick that I like to use is if you look when you have a chain one that counts as the single crochet or if you have a chain three that counts as the double crochet, whatever it is, if you flip your work and look and see which V it's coming out of, that indicates to you that is that space. So for instance, if I'm looking at it like this, I'm going to naturally want to go boom right there but that's not the correct spot. That is the chain one space. So I need to move over and start here with my single crochets in the back loop. So that's just a little, a little tip for those of you that might experience that growth in your projects or the crookedness. That might be what you're doing, so just kind of pay attention and be aware and I think you should not see that problem anymore. And also be sure that you do put a single crochet into those chain ones at the end of each row. Chain one and turn. So basically our ribbing is single crochets in the back loops all the way until you make the ribbing as long as it needs to be for whichever size you are making. Once you've completed the necessary amount of ribbing rows, you will go from this way, turn your work, chain one, and your chain one counts as a single crochet, and from there you will proceed to do a row of single crochet in accordance with however many ribs you did. So for instance, I did 18 rows, so my first one is one, and you're just going to stick these single crochet even as evenly spaced apart as you can and just wherever. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. And honestly, the reason we do that single crochet row is that is what helps our design look good moving forward because you're really creating a row there. So now we're getting into the actual technique of the design. So for row two, you will chain four, one, two, three, four, turn your work. Now the chain four counts as the double crochet and the chain one. So you're gonna skip the next um, single crochet and you're going to double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, and end it ah, in the last one with a double crochet. Then you will chain three and turn. So this is where we have, I guess, the hardest part of the pattern. And basically what it is is a double crochet into this chain one space. So we're gonna skip over this one and we're going, going to go into this one. So we're gonna work a double crochet and then we're gonna work a double crochet into that chain one space that we skipped just like so. So let me do that slowly. We're gonna skip that chain one space, work a double crochet into this one, like so. Then we're gonna go back into the one that we skipped and we're going to insert, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. And it kind of gives us this really cool kind of X look. And again, I'll do it slowly. You skip that chain one, work a double crochet, and then work a double crochet into the skipped chain one space. And just continue that all the way across. Sorry if you're hearing loud banging my kiddos are cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. Just keep going. So the last one And so then we're gonna end with a double crochet into the top of the chain three. So remember, we chained four on this row because we added an extra chain for that chain one space. So what I like to do is I like to just count one, two, three, and I know that my double crochet is gonna go into the top of the chain three and I don't accidentally put it into that extra chain one thing. That way it gives me a nice straight side right there. And then next, it's a chain one, turn. Remember that that chain one counts as a single crochet. And then you simply single crochet into each stitch all the way across. Really, really simple. I 
I love how when you're working with the Shauna cake, the color changes are so defined. Sorry, let me pull out some yarn. They're so defined, but yet subtle at the same time. I just really appreciate that. It's really, really pretty. So this is just a simple single crochet row. And basically, it's just a repeat of those three rows over and over until you reach the length that you want. So if you kind of want to be a little bit of a rebel and, and try something on your own with this stitch design, you could make a dress out of this just by making it longer. And so basically that's it. Once you do that foundation single crochet row after your ribbing, you just have the um, chain one double crochets, then you have your cross uh, rows of double crochet, and then just a single crochet row, and that's it. So like I explained here, once you have your front and back panels, you will take them, for those who are visual, I'm just gonna do this, you would take each of them, so with ribbings facing away on both sides, and you would come, sew as much as you want, leaving the head space whole. And if you, uh, just a little side note for those who don't know but would want a smaller head hole, typically your head hole, depending on the size of your head, um, you really want that space to be about six to eight inches. Now, I recommend laying it flat Get your, getting yourself some stitch markers and measuring and then sewing from here out. That way there's no gather around the neck and it, it kind of leaves, I don't know, like your seams more finished looking and it looks more like a piece that you would have bought, um, which is what I love is to make the garments that I designed to look like something you purchased from a store. So again, if, if you want um, as wide as I did, I did about six inches on both sides, which leaves a really large space for you to do the shoulder drape or um, just a more casual kind of young modern look. Not to say you're not young and modern if you're older and you like that style too. So um, once you do that and you make your sleeves, you would line your sleeve up here with this seam being squared straight. And if you're nervous about like one side pulling, what I do is I get stitch markers and I line up both of my edges of the stitch marker and then I just start on one side and go across. And the way that I like to do it, I used to do a tapestry needle and weave it, but I found that it caused my garments to pull too tight. So don't do that anymore. I only use my tapestry needles for like weaving in my ends. What I do now is I seam with a single crochet. Um, I find that it makes the garment lay better. You don't have a lot of gathering or anything like that. So I recommend um, this is basically what you would do. You would just take your piece and literally just do single crochets like that and just seam your pieces together and just go slow and make sure that like all of your stitches are lining up and everything like that and you'll be totally fine. So that's, that's how I seam, and it just gives a real great finished look, um, more like something you would buy in a store, like I said. Um, so yeah, as far as sizing goes, basically if you need to go bigger or you wanna go smaller, the key is to maintain a multiple of three. Now if you hear that and you sound totally confused and you're like, what? Don't freak out, just contact me somehow and we will work together to get everything perfectly fit exactly how you want it. Don't worry. And like I told you in the beginning of the video, everything is linked down below <clears throat> as far as the exacts for how many ribbing rows you do and how wide and how um, uh, the, the height of each of the pieces. All of that is linked down for the free pattern on my blog down below. And then of course, you can also buy the ad-free version of any of my designs on Etsy and Ravelry. And if you wind up making the Scarlet Sweater, I would absolutely love it if you would tag me on social media or shoot it to me in an email. If you don't do the social media thing, that's totally fine. I'm at yarnhookneedles at gmail.com or at yarnhookneedles. So either way, contact me, reach out, let me know, let me see it. 
We also have a Facebook group that we're really trying to build up a lot of interaction and we're starting live videos and all that good stuff. So I'd love to see you there. Our, your, our, excuse me, our group is Crocheters and Knitters of the World. And we also have some great knitting patterns coming in the fall line too. Oh, so many words, so many things. Yes, please like this video, comment, subscribe, share, let your maker friends know that this pattern is live and available. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.